This is Avengers Henry Walker. Welcome to the podcast. I want to start a new message today talking about pressing on to the rapture, which could be happening in the spring season, and also eventually being at the marriage supper of the Lamb, the marriage supper with Jesus Yeshua. But let's go to the Father in prayer first. Father, I thank you for another opportunity to minister to your people, Father. I ask you to use me just the way you want to use me, Father. Let me say only what you want me to say, nothing more and nothing less. Help people, Father, to open up their spirits and not only receive the word, but study the word for themselves. And Father, we give you all the praise and the honor, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Yeshua, by the blood of Yeshua. So again, I want to talk to you about pressing on to the rapture, which could be happening in the spring season, and going to the marriage supper of the Lamb with Jesus Yeshua. What a time that will be. Now remember on prior podcasts, I talked about how Jesus Yeshua was crucified in 31 AD on Wednesday, April 25th at 3 p.m., And we know it's 2,000 years from when he died until he comes back in the second coming, which would bring it to 2031, but we know there's seven years of tribulation before that, so the rapture could be happening this year, 2024. And also we talked on the last podcast about how there's certain feast days have solemn assemblies, and the next solemn assembly is Pentecost, Shavuot. But also I was going back and studying that 40 days after Yeshua rose from the dead on Nisan 17 is when he ascended, 10 days before Pentecost, Shavuot. And so that's an assembly too. All the uh, disciples were assembled and he was taken up, up in the air. And so it could be that we will be taken up on that same time. And that date is June 4th. Again, June 11th to June 12th is Pentecost, Shavuot. Of course, we don't know when Yeshua is coming back, but we need to watch and to be observant as to the signs and the seasons. Go with me to the book of Joel, right before Amos. It's right after Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel. I want to talk about that wedding feast. We're all so excited to be at that wedding feast. So Joel chapter 2, verse 16. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, Gather the children and those that suck the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth out of his chamber and let the bride out of her closet. So before I get into pressing on and examples from the word about pressing on, I want to talk somewhat about the wedding feast. If you go with me to Revelation chapter 19, verse 7 through 10. See, the wedding feast in heaven is really based on the Jewish customs of a wedding feast where the bridegroom and the bride, before they got married, would have a contract, a marriage contract. And then the father of the bridegroom would pay a dowry to the bride. And then after that, the bridegroom would be going to the bride's house. He'd have some of his male friends with him, and the bride would be looking for his coming, and she would bring some of her maidens to meet him. This is what happened in Matthew chapter 25 with the ten virgins. They're all waiting and looking for the bridegroom. And then the third step is that there would be the marriage supper. And so we can see the first phase of the marriage contract was fulfilled by us surrendering everything to the Father, turning our flesh over to him, asking the Father to come into our spirit, fill us with his spirit, mortify the deeds of our flesh, and make us more and more like Jesus Yeshua. And we entered into a covenant with the Father. And the dowry was paid by the Father through the blood of Yeshua. He cleansed us by his blood. He saved us by his blood. And we need to watch for his coming too. Just like the bride watched for the bridegroom's coming. And of course the marriage supper is when we'll be with him 
at that beautiful marriage feast. In Revelation chapter 19, verse 7, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife had made herself ready. We're in the process right now of making ourselves ready, allowing the Father actually to make us ready by every day letting him work on us and taking the junk out of our lives and making us more and more like Jesus Yeshua, bringing the fruit of the Spirit out of our lives. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And he said unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. That's us, the remnant. And he said unto me, These are the true sayings of the Father. Remember, it's, it's few that are going to heaven. Remember, the road to hell is wide and many are found on it. The road to heaven is straight and narrow and few are found on it. So it's important that we allow the Father to get anything out of our lives that would keep us earthbound and not going in the rapture. If you go to my website at henrywalker.org, so many written messages and two free books on the bottom of the written message page talking about the feast days and is the Trinity really a mystery, explain to the Trinity. And there's other messages on my website. One is about wine as a maca, the truth about wine. Can you have these things in your house, and especially not in your body, beer, wine, and alcohol? They're all spirits. Then you find out what happened with Yeshua at the wedding feast of Cana. He used to squeeze the grapes, boil the juice, make it into a gel, put the gel into a new wineskin so it wouldn't ferment, and then when he wanted a drink, they would squeeze the gel and add water. That's exactly what Yeshua did on the wedding feast of Cana. Because the word wine in the Old and the New Testament is the same word for intoxicating wine and, and grape juice, so you have to really read what's being talked about in a word. In that message, I talk about one glass of wine affects the brain cells. The choice is up to you, but there's, there's things that the Father's taken out of all of our lives to make sure that we're rapture ready. We're the marriage feast of the Lamb ready. So again, that's the marriage supper of the Lamb. And we want to make sure that we are at that wedding feast with Yeshua. He's the bridegroom, we're the bride. You go with me to 2 Kings chapter 13. I want to talk about pressing on. I don't know about you, but what I feel is that I need to keep pressing on at times. Pressing on, pressing on. Because there's spiritual warfare against us at times. And we need to push. If you are speaking the truth, Satan is totally against you. We've got to press on. Because greater is the Father in us than he is in the world. And if the Father is before us, who can successfully be against us? Second Kings is right after Joshua judges Ruth, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, chapter 13. Again, talking about pressing on. Sometimes it gets hard pressing on, but his joy is our strength. And those that wait upon him shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So waiting on him is doing what he wants us to do, like a waiter or waitress, serving him. He's not going to be married to a bride that has not made herself ready and not serving him and being obedient to him. Whatever the Father has for us, we need, with his help, to do it. Of course, the time is so very, very short. He doesn't want to close that door of the rapture until the last person who's supposed to go through has gone through. So 2 Kings chapter 13, verse 14. Now Elisha was fallen sick of his sickness, whereof he died. And Joash, the king of Israel, came down unto him, and wept over his face, and said, O oh, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof. And Elisha said unto him, Take a bow and arrows. And he took unto him bows and arrows. Verse 16, he said to the king of Israel, Put your hand upon the bow. And he put his hand upon it, and Elisha put his hands upon the king's hands. And he said, Open the windows eastward. And he opened it, and Elisha said, Shoot! And he shot. And he said, The arrow of the father's deliverance and an arrow of deliverance from Syria. For thou shalt smite the Syrians in Apec, till thou have consumed them. And he said, Take the arrows, and he took them. And he said unto the king of Israel, Smite upon the ground. And he smote thrice, three times, and stayed. Verse 19, Elisha was wroth with him, and said, You should have smitten five or six times. 
They knew he had smitten Syria till they had been consumed. But now he should only smite Syria three times. He didn't press on. In Philippians chapter 3, Paul said, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of the Father in Yeshua. Press on, press on. In 2 Kings chapter 4, just go back to chapter 4. No matter how you feel in your bodies, press on. Because your miracle could just be two minutes ahead of you, just doing what he wants you to do. Just going and keeping that appointment that he set up for you and watch. You could be healed on the way. Look how the lepers were healed as they went to the priest. Only one came back and worshipped Yeshua, and he was made whole. The others had still had their scars from the leprosy, but he was made whole. So just go and do what he's asked you to do. He'll give you the strength, and who knows what he could do along the way as you do what he asked you to do. As you finish the assignment. Remember, Yeshua finished that assignment from his father when he said at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, in the middle of the week on Wednesday, he said, it is finished once and for all. He paid for our sins, and that penalty was finished and laid on him. Second Kings chapter 4, talk about pressing on. Not just wait for his coming, but pressing on and doing what he asked you to do. And of course, watching for his coming. But he's come back for a busy bride. I'm not saying you're always busy, busy. You need to rest in him. But be about his business. Remember in the Gospels it mentioned that Yeshua asked the apostles to borrow their boat so he could preach to the people on the land. And they did, and he preached, and he said, now you go out and catch the fish, he said to his apostles. And they went out and caught so many fish they had to bring another boat over. But he was actually saying, you take care of my business, and I'll take care of your business. So many people are waiting for the Father to do something, but you ever think that maybe he's waiting on you to do something for him? 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1, Now they cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that thy servant did fear the father, and the creditors come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. She was in a very bad situation. But Elisha was there encouraging her to press on. In verse 2, And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? That's what I was saying before, that maybe you're waiting for the father to do something, but he's waiting for you to take the first step to do what he asked you to do originally. And she said, Your handmaid had not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels. Borrow not a few. When you are come in, you shall shut the door. That's what we need to do even more of. Shut the door on what's happening in the world and abide with the Father in the secret place of the Most High. He keeps us in his pavilion from the strife of tongues. Hide out with him. Rest in him. And when he asks you to do something, go and do it. We need to spend more time with him. And when you are come in, you shall shut the door upon you and upon your sons, and you shall pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. They said to her, There is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. And she came and told Elisha, and he said, Go, sell the oil, and pay thy debt, and live thou and thy children of the rest. So she had to press on and borrow all those vessels. And then it talks about a Shunammite lady. Her and her husband were taking care of Elisha every time he came to town. Had a table, chair, food to eat, took care of him. And Elisha asked his servant, what can I do for the Shunammite lady and her husband? And he said, the husband's old and he can't have a child. The father told Elisha to prophesy that she would have a child. And then what happened, the child was in the field with his father and he died. And she laid the child on Elisha's bed and she got one of her servants to come with her and she went out to where Elisha was. And Elisha saw her going so fast and she said, Gehazi, go meet her and ask her, is, is it all well? Is your family well? 
And she said, it is well. With the last bit of strength, she pressed on and said, it is well. That was a faith confession. She went back to the one who the Father used to give it a miracle to begin with. In verse 32, when Elisha was come into the house, where the young boy was, behold, the child was dead and laid upon his bed. In verse 33, he went in therefore and shut the door upon them both and prayed unto the father. Verse 34, and he went up and lay upon the child and put his mouth upon his mouth and his eyes upon his eyes and his hands upon his hands and he stretched himself upon the child and the flesh of the child waxed warm. Then he returned and walked in the house to and fro and went up and stretched himself upon him and the child sneezed seven times and the child opened his eyes. Wow. So he shut the door too. It's again, it's so important to shut the door on what's happening in the world. We're in the world, but not of the world. The world's going to pass away in the luster of. But we have to do the will of the Father. You don't think that the Father's going to bring judgment on the world? He sure is. Vengeance is his, he says. Just a matter of trying to help people to avoid that vengeance. We also love the Father. We can make sure that we have no baggage in our lives. Research everything that Constantine brought in to his form of Christianity and get rid of it. Again, on my message page, there's so many written messages coming against what Constantine brought into his form of Christianity. He wanted the pagans in, so he brought some of their doctrines in to appease them. When you think about it, what do all these holidays, Christmas, Easter, Good Friday, Valentine's Day, what do all these holidays have to do with Yeshua? Nothing. They're all paganistic in their foundation. The top written message that I have at henrywalker.org talks about when was Yeshua born, when did he die, when did he rise? And it eliminates three of those holidays. He's born on Passover, died on Passover. It eliminates Christmas and Good Friday. He's born on Wednesday at 3 p.m., as I mentioned in an earlier podcast. And on Saturday at 3 p.m., he rose 72 hours later. And he came to the tomb sometime after 6 p.m. And it was still dark, which was the beginning of the first day of the week. And he had already risen. That eliminates Easter. This is all about the birth of the sun god, Mitras. What does that have to do with Yeshua? The balls on the tree talk about the sun god. And some of you will say, what are my kids going to do without Christmas? Well, Hanukkah occurs in the month of December, and Jewish kids get eight days of presents. And Easter is all about a goddess Astor, a goddess of fertility. That's where all the bunny rabbits and these Easter egg hunts are all about her coming down in an egg. And Easter killed children at every ceremony that they had for her and put their blood on eggs. So what does that have to do with Yeshua? Why are so many beautiful believers engaged in those holidays? It's so dangerous. And Valentine's Day is about a demon named Cupid who wants to give some people heart attacks. And remember, as I mentioned before, that the Catholic Church replaced the Sabbath with Sunday, a day to worship the Son. That joke is in so many beautiful believers' relationship to the Father through Yeshua, and it needs to come out. Because it could keep people earthbound at the time of the rapture. They had nothing to do with Yeshua. They were all trying to camouflage the real feast days. They're all about Yeshua. And as we study these feast days, keep these feast days, we get closer to Yeshua, which is exactly what the devil doesn't want. But the choice is up to you. Again, remember, the road to heaven is straight and narrow, and few are remnant are found on it. The road to hell is wide, and many are found on it. That road leads to destruction. Really need to pray about it and break away from that stuff. But again, the choice is up to you. If you have any questions, you can email me at contact at henrywalker.org. C-O-N-T-A-C-T at henrywalker.org. I'll be so glad to help you. So you can see how the Shunammite lady pressed on. Even though her son was dead, she pressed on. And that's what we need to do, press on. Keep going forward and not looking back. So if you're serving the Father, there's times where you have to be really tired because it's not a physical thing, it's a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual war. And your body is going to feel tired. But you have to press on. Again, as Paul said, Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, 
forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of the Father in Yeshua. Press on. Second Chronicles chapter 14. I want to talk about Asa. Asa was a good king. He took down all the altars of the strange pagan idols in the high places, and he broke the images and cut down the groves. In verse 9, And it came out against Asa and his men, Zara the Ethiopian, with a, a million men and 300 chariots, and came to Marisha. Then Asa went out against him, and they set the battle in array in the valley of Zepatah at Marisha. So Asa didn't hesitate. He went right to where they were. See, the devil's afraid of you standing up against him. We are covered by the blood of Yeshua. And the greater one, the Father, lives within us. And no weapon formed against us shall ever prosper. And every tongue that comes against us in judgment, we shall condemn. Why? Because we're servants of the Father, and our righteousness is of him. In verse 11, Asa, with all his strength, probably said, Father, it is nothing with you to help, whether with many or with them that have no power. Help us, Father, for we rest on you. And in your name we go against this multitude, Father. You are our Father. Let not man prevail against us. I need strength from you, Father. I'm showing up in a battle. And you know, if I show up, you're going to show up. That's probably the same thing David believed, that if I show up, my Father's going to show up. The King of the universe is going to show up. And actually, he never leaves us or forsake us. So as a result of Asa's prayer in verse 12, so the father smote the Ethiopians before Asa and before Judah, and the Ethiopians fled. In verse 13, And Asa and the people that were with him pursued them unto Gara, and the Ethiopians were overthrown, that they could not recover themselves. For they were destroyed before the father and before his host, and they carried away very much spoil. If you're in a battle, he's got his angels with you, working with you too, helping you. We're not alone. He said he, he'll give his angels charge of us to keep us in all our ways in Psalm 91. Even when we make a mistake, they keep us. All you have to do again is show up. Just show up and defy what's coming against you. Not deny, but defy what's coming against you. And don't be concerned about what's happening in the news, in the world. Father's using things to help other people to come to him. I don't know if some of you have been looking at pictures of uh, some of the things that are happening in the United States and the world with tornadoes and fires and storms, but also these sounds that are coming from the sky. Trumpet sound, sounds like a, a lion is roaring. I was talking to the Father about it, and you can stay where you are. I'll just read it to you in the book of Joel. Joel chapter 3, verse 16. The Father also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Father will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. So the roar like a lion that people are hearing is the Father's roar from Jerusalem going around to different parts of the world. His headquarters, besides being in heaven, is in Jerusalem. And he's roaring. So many in the world are hearing this roar, and the trumpets are sounding. He's ready to go to war against those people who time after time have rejected him and fighting against his people. And the heavens and the earth shall shake. There's so many things happening. There's a whole lot of shaking going on in the world. But we that cannot be shaken will remain and go with him in the rapture. So back in Second Chronicles chapter 14, and in verse 14, And he smote all the cities around Gara, for the fear of the Father came upon them. And he spoiled all the cities, for there was exceeding much spoil in them. So they pressed on with the help of the Father and his angels, and they got much spoil. So as I was talking about before, with the marriage supper of the Lamb, the bridegroom will come for the bride, the bride go out to meet her, and they both will go to the bridegroom's house. Yeshua said, I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, you will be the Father's house in heaven at that wedding feast. So it's important that you press on to what's coming against you. Be strong in Him. Be strong in the Father and the power of His might. 
And the Father will strengthen us every step in the way. Think about Gideon. Gideon started out with 32,000 men. 22,000 went home, left with 10,000. The Father cut them down to 300 at the, the water test that they would hold on to their weapons to lap the water as a, a dog. And those are the ones he wanted. He surrounded the 100,000 men with the 300. But every step of the way, he strengthened Gideon. He said, Gideon, I want you to destroy the statues of Baal. You can do it at nighttime. Take your friend with you. Then he said, I want you to go down and hear what the enemy has to say about you. And you can take your friend with you. And he went down there. And the enemy was so scared because one of the enemy had a dream that a cake of barley came down and destroyed all the tents. There's nothing but the sword of the father, even the sword of Gideon. So they were scared, and, and so there's a fear transfer that was on Gideon as he was hiding out where the grapes were, threshing wheat for fear of the Midianites. Now that fear went on to the whole Midianite army, the 100,000, they killed each other. So it's important that we press on. Gideon pressed on, the Father gave him strength to press on, and we need to also press on, because the time is short. There's so many signs that he's coming back shortly. Again, we have this springtime right now, which is a beautiful time for him to come back. Just like in the Song of Solomon, the woman's beloved said, Come, the winter's over, the spring is here. Come fly away with me. Just be ready. But remember, some of you may know, some of you may not know, this is a pro-life ministry. We believe that life begins at conception. So every podcast, I pray for the babies in the womb. Remember, with the babies in the womb, the hearts begin to beat about 18 days. and around five months, their hearts are pumping about 25 quarts of blood per day. This is a life in the womb. I'm going to pray for the babies in the womb if you want to join with me. Father, touch those babies in the womb. Bring them to a full birth, Father. And we give you all the praise and the honor, Father, in the mighty name of Yeshua, by the blood of Yeshua. Remember, I gave that testimony about this neighbor of mine, his friend's wife was pregnant. And the doctors were saying the baby boy is going to be Down syndrome, Down syndrome. But we prayed, and I had on this podcast, I, I announced it to pray. And that baby is six months old, perfect. And I'll be dedicating that baby to Yeshua pretty soon, actually in the month of June. So if any of you had an abortion out there, repent, ask the Father to forgive you, and go on and follow him, and don't look back. Also, I mention in every podcast, if the devil or your flesh is giving you thoughts that are not in the word, just say out loud, I thank you, Yeshua, for the crown of thorns around your head. That was for me. That means my mind is protected by your blood. I only think your thoughts and give those thoughts to the Father and go on. So again, thank you for listening to this podcast. We all want the Father to get us ready for the rapture and the wedding feast with Yeshua. It'd be so great. So again, if you have any questions, you can email me at contact, C-O-N-T-A-C-T, at henrywalker.org. I'll be so glad to hear from you. So remember to next time, this is Evangelist Henry Walker saying, greater is the Father in you, your daddy, the king of the universe, than anything or anybody in the world. Oh.